now that we have defined what is the difference between a multi-statement table valued function and an inline table valued function, let's go ahead and take a moment to actually compare the execution of these two to see exactly how they're different. We're going to go ahead and compare the results of a multi-statement table value function and also the inline table value function as well. Now we're going to do this by looking at the execution plan but also the set statistics IO and time as well. We've already switched the context of our database so we're going to use the wide world importers database and now we're going to go ahead and take a look at this select statement here. So we're going to use our multi-statement table value function, and then we're going to join that over to a couple other tables, like the people table here, and also our stock items table as well. Then we're going to do some aggregation here. So you can see that I'm doing a count of everything here that we have and labeling it as units. And then we're going to also do a group by here in the order of person ID, preferred name, full name, and stock item name. So let's go ahead and execute this. And as the query is running here, we can see that it's taking a few seconds to complete. And actually, we're seeing it in flight here as the data is going. All right, so we can see that this took us 17 seconds to complete. And you can also see here that we have two execution plans that you can see here. The first one is for the multi-statement table value function here. And the second one is actually for our multiple table join. And we're going to focus down here. And there's going to be a couple of things that jump out at us. For example, the first thing that you need to know with a multi-statement table value function is that even though you can see here that we have over 231,000 rows, when we actually hover over the table, you're going to see that it is estimating only 100. So we are passing through a whole lot of more data than we're actually estimating. And that's a limitation in SQL Server 2016 and before, where it's actually going to have a hard locked in estimate for a multi-statement table value function. So because of that, we're going to go ahead and see another interesting issue here. So we got 231,000 rows coming into what's known as a nested loop. So if you look at the definition here, this is basically a for each loop. So every rows that's coming through here, we're going to do what's down here, which is our clustered index seek. So we have a nested loop join here because we're assuming a small amount of data is coming in here. Remember once again when we highlight over here that we have that estimated number of rows being 100, which makes perfect sense why the optimizer is choosing a nested loop join. The other thing that's going to happen here is we see this warning sign over here on our sort. And what this is telling us is we are actually going to utilize tempdb because we estimated that you're only going to need 100 rows. We had no idea that 200,000 rows was going to come in here. And you can see this on the warning here that there was an estimate here and exactly how much of tempdb ended up being used because we only granted it one MB of memory and we fully used it. So now we have to go to tempdb. So if we also go over to our select statement here, we can also see here that for the whole execution plan here, the memory grant for it all was 1 MB. So three things that you really need to know about multi-select table value functions is the fact that you in SQL Server 2016 are only going to have a hundred rows estimated by the optimizer when building the execution plan. That's most likely going to lead into a nested loop because looping through 100 rows isn't that bad compared to maybe 200,000. The next thing you'll notice is if you have any sorts, they most likely will end up spilling into tempdb because it's estimating a small amount of data coming through and it didn't reserve enough memory that you really need for executing this query. 
So if we actually go look here at our results, we can see and go to the messages. There's a couple other things that we're going to notice here. For example, we had about 500,000 logical reads here on our people's table and also close to another 500,000 on our stock items. So ballpark will estimate this around 1 million IOs. Also here, we're going to see that this took about seven and a half seconds of CPU time here and 15.8 seconds to complete. So let's go ahead now and take a look over at our next statement. This is the inline table value function. So the only difference here in this query and our previous query is the fact that we're using that inline table value function that we just find in the previous video. Other than that, it's exactly the same. So we're going to go ahead and run this now and we're going to look and see how is it different. So the first thing you notice here is we only see one execution plan. We did not see two like we did in a multi-statement table value function that we just executed inside of the statement above. This actually is our inline table value function here. This hash here and the join here between our orders and order lines here. This is where that inline table value function is happening here. So we notice here that when we actually look at our estimates here, we actually have good statistics that we're going off of here. So, for example, here we can see our 231,000 rows being estimated, which is going to drive us to using a hash match, which is a much more efficient operator for this amount of data coming in compared to what we saw with the multi-statement table value function. So, let's go ahead and take a look at the results here. And remember, we saw about a million logical reads when we did a multi-statement table value function. Now looking at our inline table value function, you can see that we're right around maybe 200. So a huge difference in IO and the same thing for time as well. We can see for CPU, we didn't need seven seconds. In fact, we only used about 200 and 50,000 seconds. And our total time of the query running was only two seconds. So in our next tip, we're actually gonna dive into some new functionality in 2017 and show you how multi-statement table value functions execution is gonna change a little bit.